Hi, this is a revision for looking at graphs. So this will help you if you perhaps don't remember everything that you learnt at school about graphs. So I'm going to start with the basics, all right? So first of all, what we have is our axes. Please excuse the wobbly lines. One goes up and down and one goes across. The one that goes across we call our horizontal axis. The one that goes up and down, we call our vertical axis, okay? And usually this one is X and this one is Y, okay? We'll never put X on the vertical axis and Y on the horizontal axis, but sometimes you might have other things, like if it's cost and profit, then they'll, be, they'll have different labels. But for now, we're just going to deal with X's and Y's. And what we have then is co what's called coordinate pairs. Okay, a coordinate pair is, it, it's written in the brackets like this, X and Y, and it's a point. It represents a point. We always put the X value first, and then a comma, and then the Y value. I'll give you an example. If I have the coordinate pair 3, 1, where would that be on the graph? Well, I know that the 3 is first, that's the X, because the X comes first. That means I have to go across. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 across, and then I have to go 1 up. So I'm going to go 1 up, and there is my point. And I can label it like this, 3, 1. So that is the point, 3, 1. Let's do another one. Let's do the coordinate point um, 2, negative 4. All right, so I start with my x value and I go across 2, 1, 2, that's there. And then I have to go down negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, there's negative 4 there. And when I get all the way and I mark that point in there, that point there is, whoops, that's wrong. Hang on. Undo, undo. Okay, I went to 3, negative 4. I just got a 2, negative 4. So I'm going to go across to 2 and then down 1, 2, 3, 4. And that brings me here to 2, negative 4. So a reminder, we have the x-axis. That's this line. Hang on. That's this line here, that's the x-axis. We have the y-axis, that's this line here. The x-axis goes across, it's horizontal. The y-axis goes up and down, it's vertical. Now, in the middle here, I have a point which is called the origin. It's like a starting point. And at the origin, x is 0 and y is 0. Okay, I'm going to move now to sketching our first straight line graph. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by sketching this line. The line has the equation y equals x plus 3. And what I'm going to do is fill in what's called a table of values. This table of values will help us to put all the points that we need for this line. What I'm doing is called plotting. There are two ways to draw a graph. There's plotting and there's sketching. So I am plotting. So in order to plot, I need to do two things. First, I need to complete my table of values. Then I need to put those points onto my graph. So all I'm doing is I'm using this rule, x plus 3, to, to find out what y will be for each x value. So first of all, let's start with what is y when x is minus 2? Well, what I'll end up with is I'll replace my x with minus 2 and plus 3. Minus 2 plus 3 gives me 1.
Okay, my next one is when x is minus 1. I'm going to simply replace my x with minus 1 and add 3, and that gives me 2. When x is 0, I add 3 and I get 3. When x is 1, I add 3 and I get 4. When x is 2, I add 3 and I get 5. Now, there's a couple of things I'd like you to notice here. Firstly, notice that as x increases by 1, y is also increasing by 1. And that's because my x is not multiplied by anything. It's not 2x or 5x, so I'm just going up by 1s. Okay, also notice that this important point is called my y-intercept, and I find it by finding when x is 0. Because x is 0 down here, and that is going to be true all the way up the line. x is 0. So what I want to know is which one of these points, when x is 0, is on my line? Well, in this case, it's when y is 3. That's on my line. So I might just put that one in first. x is 0, y is 3. That's my first point. All right, let's fill in all the others. I'll start at negative 2, 1. So my x is negative 2. I go across to negative 2. And then I'm... Actually, I shouldn't do that. Okay, I go across to negative 2, and I go up 1. That brings me to here. Then when x is negative 1 and y is 2, that's here. When x is 0 and y is 3, I've already done that point here. When x is 1 and y is 4, that's here. When x is 2, y is 5, that's here. Now... Because I'm doing this freehand, I may not have a perfect straight line, and I'm not using a ruler, but my next task is to draw a line that joins all these. Now, what I'm going to do is put arrows on the end. And what those arrows mean is that line doesn't end. A line doesn't end. A line theoretically goes on forever, and those arrows show you that you could keep following that line forever and ever. That's important because some lines do end. So if this was a line relating to cost, I'm never going to have a negative cost. If I'm buying something, the cost will always either be zero or more than zero. That's just a, an example of when my line might have a stopping point at one end. Okay, so that's sketching a basic linear graph. I'm going to do one more just to make sure you're getting the hang of this. So let's start with filling in my table. My new equation is y equals 2x minus 4. So I'm going to start again at negative 2. This part of my equation tells me I'm doubling x. 2 times x is double x. So what's double of negative 2? Negative 4. And then I take away 4. That gives me negative 8. Now what x is negative 1, I take x is negative 1, I double it to get negative 2, and I take away 4, I get negative 6. Oops. Okay, now x is 0. 2 times 0 is, think about it, 2 lots of 0 is just 0. So 0, take away 4, gives me negative 4. Notice I'm not saying minus 4. Negative 4 is a number. Minus 4 is a thing you do if you subtract 4. Okay. Now I've got x is 1. 2x. 2 times 1 minus 4 is minus 2. Negative 2, excuse me. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 4 gives me 0. 2 times 3 minus 4 gives me 2. 2 times 4 minus 4 gives me 4. Okay. There are two really important points on my graph, on my table. This, oops, that was meant to be red. Red. This is the y-intercept.
I know that because x equals 0. And this point here has y equals 0, so that's going to be my x-intercept. Notice that we didn't have an x-intercept in the other graph, but we would have if we'd just kept drawing a little bit further. If we'd gone beyond negative 2 to negative 3 or negative 4, we would have found an x-intercept. OK, time to sketch the graph. I'll just do my axes. OK, I've drawn my axes, and I'd like you to notice that on my x-axis, that's my horizontal axis, my little markers on the graph go up in ones. I go from 0 at the origin here, and then I go to the right to 1 and then 2. To the left, I go to minus 1 and minus 2. On my vertical axis, my y-axis, I'm actually going up in twos. It doesn't mean the ones and threes aren't there. There would be 1, there would be 3, but I don't need them because all my y values are even numbers because I'm going up in twos. All right. Now, the reason my graph goes up in twos, let's just have a look at that. This is going to start making this look messy, but never mind. I'm going to draw in green all over the red stuff. From negative 8 to negative 6 here, that's actually an increase of 2. From negative 6 to negative 4 here, that's an increase of 2. From negative 4 to negative 2, that's an increase of 2. From negative 2 to 0, an increase of 2. From 0 to 2, an increase of 2, and so on. So every time x goes up by 1, y goes up by 2. And that happens because of this number here. That number is our gradient. Gradient tells me how steep the line is. So think of it like steps. If you have steps that every time you measure one, uh, let's say, one metre across, it goes up by two metres, that's going to be some steep steps. But if every time you measure one metre across, you go up by half a metre, that's not so steep. So gradient tells us something about the steepness of the line. So in this case, every time x increases by 1, my y is going to increase by 2. OK, let's plot this. Let's use blue. Negative 2, negative 8, down here. Negative 1, negative 6, just here. 0, negative 4, just here. 1, negative 2, just here. 2, 0 is here. Oh, I didn't leave myself enough space. 3, 2 is just going to be here. And 4, 4 will be somewhere up here. All right, let's join it with a line. And let's put my arrows on. We'll show that this line does continue. Why aren't you working? Come on. Well, you get it. There's sort of an arrow there. Half an arrow. Okay. Two significant points to look at. We've already looked at them. I'm just going to pause because something's not working. Pause. Oh, come on. I apologise for this if this is continuing, but it's not working. The thing is responding. So what I'm going to do is save this. Okay, I hope this is working. So let's just look now at our significant points. This point here is my x-intercept. That is found from where y equals 0. This point here is my y-intercept, which I found when x equals 0. So in some questions you might be asked just to find the intercepts. That's what they are.